Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample paper discussions. We are in set C of this foundation level paper and we are talking about the chapter 4 questions. So far we have covered almost all the questions of this chapter 4 and we are just remaining with few of the remaining questions of this chapter which we will be talking about in our this tutorial. So let's look forward and we will be talking about our very next question which is question number 27 that is uh, to talk about the decision table testing. So the question says consider the following decision table for the portion of an online airline reservation system that allows frequent flyers to redeem points for reward travel. And that's a very common scenario again if you are using a credit card or any kind of you know online uh, shopping you do get rewards uh, as points in return and you can always redeem them. Suppose that there are two equivalence partitions uh, for the conditions where account or password OK is not true, one where the account is invalid and the another account the valid uh, the account is valid but the password is invalid. Now if there is a table provided to you uh, right after the line number one that we have two conditions here account or password OK and we have three conditions or combinations identified that number one if you see the first line here, it says if account or password, either of them is not okay, then you cannot have any action based on this. That means the account here means you do not have an existing account. And the second says you do have an existing account, but you forgot the password or your password is incorrect, then still you cannot log in, right? So the login scenario is broken down into two parts further, right? They're giving you a hint here that assume that or suppose that your first category where it says account or password okay is no is broken down into two categories further that what if you don't have an existing account or what if you have an account but you do not remember your password right and the two and three are absolutely the same so let's read the question further suppose that there is only one equivalence partition corresponding to conditions where account or password okay is true that means for the case number two and three there is just one partition so right now what they are telling you is that you see three test cases here one two three but one is broken down into two sub partitions and uh, now it becomes four partitions as simple as that now uh, if you want to design tests to cover the equivalence partitions for the account or password OK and also for this portion of the decision table, what is the minimum number of tests required? Now that's a very straightforward question team, we don't have to complicate it. A lot of people start thinking too much on this like okay as per the decision table there are three test cases but they are also talking about concatenating equivalence partition here. So it's just that they're saying there are nothing below these uh, test cases except for the first one that is where account or password is not true. You have two partitions to check if the account exists or not. So if the account does not exist, that's a separate scenario. And if the account exists and you don't have a password, that's a different scenario. So one is broken down into two parts further. So you will have four test cases as simple as that, right? So one, two, three and one being broken down into two. So you will have one, two, three, four, right? So you will have four tests required to cover this equivalence partitions or the given scenario of the decision table. So this is just a simple tricky uh, question which is trying to slightly confuse you. But if you pay attention to what you're reading, if you relate back to what is equivalence partition and here we are talking about creating ranges, it's just that breaking the scenario number one into another two parts and asking you to test by four tests instead of three. So keeping it very straightforward and very simple to the point, the right answer here will be C, that is four test cases would be required. The number one uh, is broken down into two, so you would need two tests for that, and two and three will need one each. So you'll have four tests covering this entire scenario. Let's jump into the next question, which is to talk about the state transition testing. And here we have a picture provided to us uh, as usual, and we have a state transition diagram. And let's look at the question there. Consider the following state transition diagram for a credit card only unattended petrol pump or gasoline pump, right? So here uh, you don't have, you know, someone fulfilling the fuel in your car 
or maybe in your tubular you just park your vehicle there you you know feed in all the values and put in your credit card and you define the amount or the gas which you want to fill and then you just dispense it right so assume that you want to develop the minimum number of tests to cover each transition in the state transition diagram assume further that each test must start at the beginning state waiting for the customer and each test ends when a transition arrives at the beginning state again which is waiting for the customer how many tests do you need and now that's very simple they have given you the initial and end point that how you should loop this entire diagram and tell me what are the number of minimum tests required to cover different scenarios so taking the initial point which is uh, right here on the top that is waiting for customer and from there if you follow the directions you see the very first path insert credit card valid select grade message and it goes to waiting for fuel type and from there it returns cancel or timeout goodbye message and going to wait for customer that's my very first test covering the first loop in the diagram and here the initial and end point is same that is waiting for customer the second test will be waiting for customer waiting for fuel type and then going next is waiting for pumping and if it times out again then it goes back to waiting for customer so my second test is waiting for customer waiting for fuel type waiting for pumping and waiting for customer right let's go with the next one that is the test number three here waiting for customer waiting for fuel type waiting for pumping and successfully pumping and then returning back to the waiting for customer that means a successful transaction happens here right so we got three tests right here and should not be forgetting the fourth one that's on the top waiting for customer insert credit card which is invalid right and it returns back to waiting for customer that means you just get cancelled there and error message appears you remove the card put some other card and try again so that's the fourth test what you need so it's very straightforward and simple the reason why this looks slightly complicated is because or why you would go wrong because you would always consider this cyclic process but you won't consider the one which is for the invalid credit card and that's where you pick the options as like option three or you would say oh there's only one transition which is going to insert card invalid and coming back to waiting for customer directly you never think about the entire process or sometimes you get confused and you say only one test would be required where initial and end point are same right now either way however what are the different ways the question is what are the different ways by which you can start from waiting for customer and come back to waiting for customer what are the alternatives what are the different ways by which you can do that and there are four options here right so putting it up all together again the right answer here for this question would be a that is for four test cases or test would be required to cover different scenarios starting from waiting for customer and reaching out back to waiting for customer let's look into the last question here which looks quite of uh, repetitive we covered this question in our previous uh, tutorials of the same set in the same chapter but the question is different this time uh, you are testing an e-commerce uh, e-commerce system that sells cooking supplies such as spices, flours, and other items in bulk. The units in which the items are sold are either grams for spices and other expensive items which are you know, bought in the smaller quantity or kilograms for the flour and inexpensive items. Regardless of the units, the smallest valid order amount is 0.5 units. That means you can order minimum 500 grams. Example, uh, sorry, 0.5 units, that's like 0.5 grams okay so example half a gram of cardamom pods and the largest valid order amount is 25 units which means 25 kilograms of sugar that means you can buy minimum 0.5 gram and maximum 25 kilogram uh, the precision of units is field is 0.1 that means you can shop for uh, say for example 20.1 kilogram or maybe 1.1 gram, 1.2 gram, 1.3 gram, etc. like that. Uh, which of the following is minimal set of 
input values that cover the equivalence partitions for this field. Now that's a very simple and very straightforward thing that you need to first create a quick table which tells you what is the equivalence partitions. And here we got the table. Let's have a look on this. So we will have three partitions here. That is one being the valid range. That means minimum order is 0 0.5, two maximum of 25. On the left, anything less than or equal to 0.4 is not a valid input. You cannot shop for that. And on the right, anything above or equal to 25.1 is not a valid input. That means you cannot shop for anything 25.1 or greater than that and less than or equal to 0.4. So given that table, we need to pick up the right set of values which covers all the partitions because the question says, which set of input values that cover the equivalence partitions for this field, right? So if we take option A, option A says 10 and 28. So 10 goes to one field, that is one partition, valid one, and 28 goes to the third partition, and it covers only two of them. If you look at B, it says 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 25.0, and 25.1. It's cover all the three, but it has extra for one partition. That means we don't take two values from each partition, right? We need to find out the minimal, minimal set of values. So you should not be saying that B and C both are correct or B and D or both are correct or something like that, right? Because B is taking a one extra, which is not the minimum. We can do less than that. Let's look at option C. It says 0.2 covering the first partition, 0.9 covering the second partition, and 29.5 covering the third partitions. And D, that is 12.3. That's just one partition anyways. So I think this is very straightforward, made clear to you that uh, when you have three values covering three partitions is the minimum value what you would need. And very straightforward. The right answer here is C, 0.2, 0 0.9, and 29.5 are the right set of minimum values required to cover all the partitions. A cannot be, it just covers two. D cannot be, 12.3, just one. B takes more than the minimal set of values. So pretty much straightforward that only C is the right answer either way, right? Keeping it straightforward, that's all we had for the uh, chapter number four from the set C. We'll be stepping into chapter five in our next tutorial and looking forward to share more information with you about the test management. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.